Exodus 19, verse 16 and 17. On the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people could be trembled. Verse 17. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. I want to read chapter 20, verses 18 to 21. Chapter 20, verses 18. Now, when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and dreadful, and they stood far off and said to Moses, You speak to us, we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, lest we die. Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that the fear of him may be before you, that you may not sin. Verse 21. The people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. Our Heavenly Father, we worship you. We praise you all this evening. Lord, we remember what was our former state. We were far off, Lord, and you, by your grace, through your Son, have brought us so that we can call you up our heart. Lord, we pray, God, that you bless this time as we meditate upon these verses, Lord. We pray these things in the name of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. All of us, uh, we are attending the Hebrews Bible study. We are looking at the contrast uh, between Mount Sinai and uh, Mount Zion. So uh, very good. We have four verses and we have one hour. Uh, especially when you're dealing with the old covenant, that time is not sufficient. You have to do it really quick. Right? So we don't cover everything. So what I'm trying to do this uh, morning as we worship, as we do this evening as we prepare to worship this. Draw a little more look in detail, uh, more into the Sinai incident, what happened in Sinai. But this event uh, in Israel's history is a very, very uh, important event. It is the giving of the law. The whole uh, setting to this event is, is wonderful. God tells uh, Moses, if you read uh, in chapter 19, God tells Moses, Verse 4, 19, 4. You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I bore on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. In other words, God is telling uh, the children of Israel how God brought them out of slavery, out of Egypt. And God is saying, you will be my people. You will be a kingdom of priests. You will be a holy nation. And he sends this word to Moses. These uh, children of Israel hear the word. They say, we will do whatever the Lord has commanded. And God sets the scene for this Sinai covenant incident. And God says, before I meet, the people of God, the children of Israel, must do certain things. They must consecrate themselves. They must, uh, I am holy. They, they must consecrate themselves so they may meet me in an appropriate way. Right. We read in Exodus 19, the Lord saying this. Exodus 19, verse 10. The Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come, to come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all people. Verse 12. You shall set limits for the people all around saying, take care not to go up into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. Verse 13. No hand shall touch him, but he shall be stoned or shot. Whether beast or man, he shall not live. So we see here the solemnness, the seriousness of coming here, God. God puts a clear uh, boundary near the mountain. God puts clear limits. Take care, he says. 
lest you touch the edge of the mountain. For whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. No matter who it is, beast or man, they shall be put to death. And Moses communicates this to the children of Israel and they consecrate themselves. And then there is this trumpet sound and we read in verse 16. On, on the morning of the third day, God comes down. There is this uh, thundering, lightning, thick cloud. And all the people in the camp trembled. And there we see in verse 17, the people, all the people, stood at the foot of the mountain. They stood at the foot of the mountain. But as we are going to see later, they stood far off. Here's again an interesting incident. If you read through the next few verses, you will find out that as the people stood at the foot, and Moses goes up the mountain, you know what's the first thing God tells Moses? Verse 21. Go down and warn the people lest they break break through to the Lord to look and many of them perish. He already said that three days ago, first time, right? Lest they die. First thing when Moses goes up the mountain, verse 21, the Lord says, Go down, warn the people lest they break through to the Lord to look and many of them perish. Here's the second warning. And Moses says, God, I already communicated this. Verse 23, Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Zionai, for you yourself warned us, saying, Set limits around the mountain and consecrate. I already told it. I already told it. Why are you telling me again? Listen to the third warning, verse 24. The Lord said to him, Go down and come up, bringing bringing Aaron with you. This is the warning now. But do not let the priests or the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he break out against them. Three times. Three days ago, the first time, Moses, as soon as he goes to the mountain, he goes on top of the mountain. Second time, the Lord wants people. If they come near, they will die. Third time, God is saying, Sinners cannot approach me. If they approach, they will die. Listen to the response of the people after God gives the Ten Commandments. I'm going to read verse, chapter 20, verse 18. When all the people saw the thunder and lightning and sound of the trumpet and mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled and they stood far off. Again, that phrase, far off. They stood far off. And they say this to Moses, you speak to us, we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, lest we die. People saw the holiness of God. People saw this theophany at Mount Sinai. You speak to us, Moses, we don't want to speak to God. And Moses talks to them and consoles them in verse 21. Again, that, that phrase, again, the people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. Far off. I want to put forward two things. First, when, when we see God warning them three times, you see God's, we see God's heart of compassion to itself. God does not want sinners to perish. And God gives three times this emphasis let them not come near as they are. The compassionate heart of God. As the people stood at the foot of the mountain and as the people stood far off, the second thing you ought to note is this. If God had not showed more compassion forever, the people would have been far off. 
Here are the covenant people of God. Here are Jews, not even Gentiles. Here are Jews, God's covenant people. And had not God shown compassion, they would forever be at the foot of the mountain. They would forever be standing far off. And God, out of His compassion, acts, works this plan of salvation. So they may not be far off, but come near. If that is the case of Jews, the children of Israel in the mountain, you and I Gentiles, what of us? Please turn to Ephesians 2.13. Ephesians 2.13. In the first century, when the temple was standing, in this first century temple before 70 AD, there was this corridors. There was this temple first, and then there is what is called the courtyard of the Jews. There, the Jews could enter it. On, on the entry to, to this courtyard of the Jews, there was one sign. There was one small sign that said this. Gentiles who passed that border would be put to death. And Paul is telling the Ephesian Christians now, in Ephesians 2, you who are far off are brought near to 13, are brought near by the blood of Christ. The Jews stood at the mountain far off. Gentiles were much far off, you and me. But God, over His compassion, works out this plan of salvation that in His Son's death, you and I may have our sins forgiven and we may, instead of being far off, be drawn near to them. Not only does He give access to His presence, but He gives us a wonderful privilege. I want you to turn to Galatians, Galatians 4.6. Through faith, like our brothers just mentioned, Brother Vijay and Brother, uh, Brother Joel. Through faith, now we receive this sonship, right? Verse 6. And because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then a heir to God. Brothers and sisters, this is the greatest privilege any sinner can receive. Not only we were brought near by the sacrifice of Christ, but now His Spirit dwells us, and by that Spirit we can call God above. We are in the family of God. There is no greater privilege than this. For all that God has done, what can we do but only worship Him? We are indebted to Him. We are debt debtors to mercy alone. For all our days of our life, all we can do is thank Him and worship Him for giving us this privilege of calling Him above our heart. Let us take this time to worship the Lord.